Hi everyone. Today I want to do something different. I want to feature some of the great crow stories you've shared here in the comments under our videos. It's always super exciting for me to hear about your experiences with crows or ravens. Thank you so much for sharing and let's dive into it. Michael Monson wrote, when I was like 12 years old, I was walking to school. It was kind of a rural area and I saved this crow that was trapped in, in this chicken wire somehow. The next day like 100 crows waited for me when I walked to school and one of them bobbed his little head. I like to think it was the, the one I saved, but there were definitely way more crows than normal just sitting around that one spot. Thank you Michael for sharing your story. First of all, how kind of you to save this crow. Even as a 12 year old, you did exactly the right thing and you understood there is someone in trouble and you need to help him. We all know crows remember faces, so I am sure this crow you saved remembered you and maybe told his friends. Another rescue story from Artemis 90 this one is a little bit more dramatic. I rescued a crow from drowning in the lake next to my house. My dog alerted me the crow was near so I was paying attention to make sure that my dog didn't chase it. It was trying to have a bath in the shallow water. I noticed it looked like it had been sprayed by something sticky and it was covered in gnats. It tried to fly off and I saw it struggling and then crash into the deep water. So I tied my dog to a safe place and grabbed a kayak to go rescue the crow. He was barely able to keep his head out of the water and the more he panicked, the more he was sinking. So I started talking to him as calmly as I possibly could. He started to calm enough, he could let me get close. I put my paddle under his body and slowly lifted him up and held it while the water poured off his feathers. I then placed him on the nose of my kayak so he could rest. I kept talking to him while I paddled closer to the shore. Once he was rested enough, he flew to a small tree to finish recovering. It was an incredible experience, but the best thing was he became a friend. If I was outside, he was with me, even flew along with me when I went for walks. He continued this for a few years. He eventually brought his partner here and now, about seven years later, we have a group of crows that call our yard home and they are all from my crows group and their offspring. Wow, what an incredible story. Really moving how Artemis saved this crow from drowning. And then this crow became his friend. And I know that crows are very loyal friends. And I know also from my experience that I really like it when you talk to them. And how cool is it to go for a walk and have a crow fly next to you? That is really a dream. But can crows help us? Yes. Kay Weisgerber wrote, I had a pet crow when I was a child over 50 years ago. Such a wonderful relationship with many funny stories, but recently I had interaction with crows again. The crows saved my tiny brown dog from being taken by an eagle. I'm sure every one of you has seen crows chasing raptors away. They not only keep the sky safe for themselves, they keep it safe for little songbirds and in this case dogs too. Apollo Fell wrote, I made friends with a pair of crows one summer and was incredibly charmed when two more crows, presumably their offspring, began to visit as well. Sadly, I had to move away before I could really develop a closer friendship, but all four of them sat in the trees above me as I packed up my things into a moving van. I have no doubt they knew I was leaving. I wonder about them often and miss them terribly. Edit, I have not been able to return to check on them because I live several hundred miles away now. 
I have plans to travel back next year, which will be six years since I left. I don't have reason to believe the crows will still be there or that they will remember me, but I guess we will see. What is fascinating to me uh, in this story is the deep connection Apollo um, has to these birds, even after many years. And I think I can understand this because they connect with us on such a deep level, even though they are wild birds, or maybe because they are wild birds. It is such an extraordinary experience to have them as friends. This is also a story about a friendship. Leo Rapai wrote, When I was around seven years old, there was an old crow who would come visit my house every morning. They were always terrified of my parents, but they quite liked me and my older sibling, in some cases even resting on my arm when they got tired. They started to look a bit more shaggy and dirty and were moving a bit slower, and eventually stopped showing up. I know what probably happened, but I've been yearning for that sort of connection since then. Appreciate this a lot. Wow, what a beautiful experience. A seven-year-old child having a wild friend. This is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. You cannot go into a shop and just buy a crow, like you can buy a cat or a dog. So you have to make friends with a wild bird which has its own will and has to come to you. The next story is about gifts. Halcyon Starlight told us about how she received gifts from her crows and what she did with them. I used to leave a tribute every time I came home from work for the crows, not trying to befriend them, just because I wanted to. After a few months, they would start to leave me a tribute too. Usually just bottle caps or random shiny objects, but it really touched me on a deep level. I have saved a few of the things they brought for me and even made some admittedly not very good jewelry from it for them to see me enjoying their gifts. I loved those birds. I wish I could have taken them with me when I moved. This story too has a melancholy tone to it. I have heard many stories about crows bringing gifts to humans. Um, it never happened to me actually. I sometimes find little stones or sticks or shells on my terrace, but I don't know the meaning behind this and I just think it's really fascinating. Here's another story about gifts. The Smith wrote, My wife and I feed the crows around our house. They leave us gifts on our deck. Shiny rocks, strings, flowers, once a fishing lure. I love our crows. This story is from Fue Manchu. I befriended a mating pair and their extended family and they bring their babies to my tiny little backyard because they know it was safe. What I found attracted them most was the access to clean water. I took a large plastic saucer, one of those bottom strays for a round planter, and would just make sure it was clean every day. I also feed them treats on occasion as well. Be sure to talk to them. Now, when they come by, all I do is start talking with them and they all fluff up like big balloons. They will get excited to see you. My most recent treasure they brought to me was a shiny silver children's play coin. Now if I can just train them to find me real money, that would be great. I mostly get wetted up a tin foil from someone's garbage can. Be on the lookout for shiny stuff in your yard after you make your new crow friends. This comment has a lot of important info in it. First of all, If you want to attract crows, you need a big water bowl. That's also my experience. Because crows like to put all their food in water before they eat it or feed it to their young. A water bowl is definitely one of the best things. Then the second one, they like it when you talk to them. 
and then they fluff up like big balloons. <laughs> this is what uh, micros do too. Nabi wrote, don't ever do bad to crows or ravens, ever. A co-worker told me when one time he threw some pine cones at a crow for cawing on a tree in his backyard while trying to get some sleep. Next thing he knows, there were about 30 of them cawing in unison in that same tree for the next several weeks at the same tree and same time. <laughs> that sounds about right. Don't ever do bad to crows or ravens, ever. They have a very good memory and they will not forget. But if you have a connection to them and you feed them every day and then something terrible bad happens, for example, this story happened to me, um, one of the fledglings wandered into our conservatory and uh, couldn't find its way out, so I just grabbed it and said put it outside. They were totally crazy. They screamed at me from all trees. I don't know, maybe 30, 50 crows from all the neighborhood came together. Also the magpies, everyone was screaming and shouting. And I was sure they would never trust me again after this. I was really, really shocked and so sad. And then after 20 minutes, came out with a peanut and Kreri came back and he took the peanut and I was so relieved and this is the example for me so I know they get upset but if they know you and they already have some trust in you they can overcome this. Lee Henderson wrote, love these birds, they hold grudges too. An ex of mine years ago threw water at a murder of crows that was always on her power lines behind the fourth floor patio. From that day on, she was bombed by them when she'd leave the building. She basically had to duck and cover running for her car. I could be walking beside her and they'd only target her. To be honest, I could never help from laughing. Plus, I warned her not to throw the water at them that morning. Okay, no comment on this one. So that's it for today. We have many, 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 many more comments from you and so many interesting stories. If you would like to hear more of these stories, let us know in the comments and we will make more such videos. Also, thank you very much for watching and listening and have a nice day. Bye.